Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to this brand new series, Web Development for Real Beginners. In this course, I promise, we're gonna start at zero. We will look at what is a web page, which components make a web page up, and then we will go step by step through these components to really get you going with web development. Now, I'm not telling you that after this video series, you'll be able to create super awesome complex websites, but I will promise you that you will have everything you need to really get started with web development. So let's, let's dive into it. So I'm here on the Microsoft US page and this is no coincidence. I'm here because this page is really good for talking about what a web page really is and which components make it up. Without any basics, you're on your web page like this and you think, oh, well, yeah, it's looking pretty okay, right? So we got our, our menu bar here, then we got this big main slider here or image gallery where we can cycle through, well, in this case, two of their main products. We get a little more products here and so on. We can, can scroll down. We got these effects like this um, image here, which will change every few seconds. So this web page really has some components you see on modern websites these days. So what actually is a web page? Now, a web page is simply what our browser displays when he gets data from a server. So when we enter Microsoft.com here in the, UR, the, the URL up here in our browser URL bar, what our browser will do is send a request to the Microsoft servers saying, hey, I got a visitor who wants to see your web page. Please give me all the information I need to show it to him. Now, the Microsoft server might do some stuff in, in the background, but in the end, it will send us back some HTML, which the browser then can then render for us to display. Now, this HTML part is really important because HTML in the end is what every web page you see is. Obviously, on the server, there might be running different programming languages and, and very complex, complex business logic, but what you see in your browser will always be HTML rendered to you because browser developers as well as web developers need some standards for which they can develop so that they know, okay, we get this pool of, in this case, HTML tags, as we will see soon, from which we can take some to create our website. And this will make sure that the website will look the same in each browser on each device. Now that is a bit of a simplification. There are small differences, unfortunately, but in generally, that's the logic. Now, if we want to see that HTML code, we can just right click with most browsers and then we will have some point which says view source here or source code here. So I'm using a German browser. That's why it's in German, but in general, this would be in English, view the source code. And if we click it, well, we see the source code of this web page. And this, what we see here, is exactly what our browser gets as a response upon its request it's sent to the server. Now, as you can see, that's a bit hard to read, although it's at least a little bit indented, but not the way you want to look at a web page, probably. And that is cool because that's the job of the browser. It is taking all of this code and rendering into this nice looking view here. Now, I'll be honest with you. Pure HTML wouldn't create a page like this. Pure HTML is all you need to be able to render a web page to the user, but it will look pretty ugly because pure HTML only gets some basic styling, a very, very generic styling. 
and it will not look nice and we will see this in the next video where we go into HTML a bit more. So what we get from the browser is not only the HTML here but we also got some styling rules and this is this can always be found at the top of our HTML document we get back from the browser. So here we will have a style section. Let me just look for it. Style. Link. Here. Get these link tags. Which are which have a relation to a style sheet sheet and are of type text CSS. Now CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And it is the styling language of the web, if you want to put it that way. Now, there are several ways to tell the browser how to style an element, and one would be to write it directly into the element tag, one would be to put a styling section at the beginning of an HTML document where you define some rules, but the most commonly used is to outsource it into separate styling sheets, such called CSS files, like this one, shell.min.css. Now this file lies on some other server or on the same server, both is possible. And here in the HTML document, we're basically telling the browser, okay, there is some styling which has to be applied to this page and the rules can be found in this document. Now you can absolutely specify separate documents and what the browser will do is load them all up in the order you specified here. And this is important because cascading style sheets do cascade, so they overwrite each other by order styles are created or entered into the document. And we will go into detail much more about CSS in our next videos, but just so you know, ordering is very important in CSS as well as um, cascading in general. But we will get back to that. So we got our links here, which load some style sheets. Here's another one, link, also referring to a style sheet. And these style sheets, here is one loaded up, then define a bunch of rules on the sizing of our font, on the colors, the spacing, the way the, the items are aligned and um, if they sit next to each other and so on and so on. Now as you can see this is not very readable, readable here and that's because it is minified. That means for the developer certainly hasn't written it in this way. The developer has written it nicely um, spaced out and, and colored and you don't code like this, right? But in the end, you got your build process where we will make sure that once you're done, everything is crunched up as much as you can. And this has one single reason. A file like this only contains text, but even this text will add up file size wise if you get a lot of indentation, blank spaces and so on, which you will absolutely have in your development environment, but you don't want it in your production environment because the browser has to download all these files because it's specified here in the beginning and obviously it will need these files, otherwise it wouldn't be able to interpret your web page styling. And if you get a bunch of big size files for the browser to download on every page it withens, with it, this can really add up to your page loading speed and you don't want that. Okay, so that's the second building block besides HTML, cascading style sheets. So you can memorize this at this point. HTML will lay out the structure of our web page and CSS will apply some style to it so it looks nice. Now the last building block 
is something like these pictures here, which change automatically. That is achieved via JavaScript. So you get this like holy trinity of front end web development. And we're just talking about front end web development here at the moment because we're talking about what the user sees, which is the front end. The holy trinity, I will just call it best this way, is HTML for structure, CSS for the styling, and JavaScript for all the effects and uh, good user experience, really. Because the HTML document by itself, as well as the styling, is static. Once it is loaded, it doesn't change by itself. So if we want it to change, like exchanging this picture here, opening some um, pop-up windows, if the user clicks somewhere, dynamically reloading data, we would have to implement it via JavaScript which is a programming language which will run directly in the browser. It is not pre-compiled. It is interpreted by the browser on the run. And then it will do all kinds of stuff. So this is the program, programming language we can use to run it on the client, the, the user computer, and will, which then can really enhance the user experience. So if we're back to this HTML source code here. Let me just search for script, which are these script tags here. And there we have two options of including scripts again. One is to just open a script tag and write our script between the script tags. This is the case here. We got our opening script tag here and we got our closing script tag here and between we get some JavaScript. Okay. You do this for, for some scripts you want to have in your pages, but here as a, it was the case with CSS, the more common case is to include an external script file. So this is here, the case, is the case here. We got our script type of text JavaScript and between our script tags here, we don't have anything but we're including this source here. And this is linking to a script on another server. In this case, it's jQuery, which we will talk about too, because jQuery is a very neat little JavaScript library, which is often used on web pages, which really just makes some operations easier and very yeah, handy to, to do. So that is our JavaScript file, which will, as the CSS file was, be loaded when this page is requested and the server sends back this HTML or this, this document here. Then the browser will read it through it from top to bottom and execute every line. And this includes downloading, styling and scripting files as well as rendering this. And that's, by the way, why it's important to have our styling sheets at the beginning of this document because the browser will then first load our styling sheets and then it will go through the HTML structure and apply the stylings defined in the sheets. And if you were to include our styling sheets at the bottom of this page, well then our browser would just render everything very ugly and in the end it would get the rules, but that's when everything is over and it wouldn't apply it. So therefore styling has always been loaded at the beginning of this document, whereas scripts can be loaded in the beginning in the head tag. I will go back, I come back to this later too, of our document where we define some metadata for it. It can also be loaded in the body tag, which is beginning here, uh, which holds the content of our document. And it can also be loaded at the end of our body tag, which is a very common place for most scripts because think of scripts in this way. They enhance user action. So when do they need to be available? Once the page has loaded, obviously, because the user is not interacting with the page in any way until it is finished loading. That's why we include scripts at the bottom of the page most of the time, because that, that, that does suffice. Yeah? It's, it's okay if they are loaded last, 
because the user is only going to interact with them once everything is loaded. And then you might say, okay, but it doesn't matter if I load them first or last, right? It does matter because script files can be very large. They are only text, but they con can contain a lot of text and we can load a lot of scripts uh, files. And now if this is the case and we were to load them at the top of our page, then the browser would see, okay, I have to load the script, it would start loading it and it would only continue once it is loaded. Because as I said, it goes through this document line by line and it only continues with the next line uh, when the line before it is done. So it's better to include them at the bottom so it can render out all the page and then load the script text. So the user sees a page, page even though it might not be fully loaded, there might be some scripts missing, but it already has the page. The user already has the page to look at and it doesn't look like the page takes forever to load. Now if the user wants to interact with the page and some script is necessary for this and this script is not loaded yet, then obviously this interaction will fail. But this is a very rare case. We're talking about milliseconds and seconds of loading time, but it's still better to load document first and the scripts last so that we get to view something on our screen as soon as possible. Now that's a lot of talking about this HTML thing and this CSS and JavaScript thing, but it's important for you to get the components of a web page and how they play together. Now, now that you get this rough overview, in the next videos, we're going to dive deeper into these components. We're talking about HTML, we'll be talking about CSS, and in the end we will also be talking a little bit about, about JavaScript. So, I see you there. Bye.